So we are going to start talking about quadratic functions and other polynomial functions for that matter in this chapter. But the first section in particular is on quadratic functions. So I want to refresh your memory about um, the different forms of the equations that we are going to see. So this first equation that you're going to look at and consider is this form, vertex form. And I want you to think about or remember what each of those parts tell us. So remember this H and this K are our vertex. And remember the line X is equal to H is going to be our equation for our axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Remember the H value because it's inside the parentheses and attached with the X tells us that we are either going to shift left or right. And the K, and remember this is, I'm sorry, I wanted to remind you of something else. Remember we go opposite the direction that it seems like we should go. So when you see a minus sign here, we are going to go to the right in the positive direction. When you see a plus, we're gonna to go to the left in the negative direction. But the K value here, remember it's on the outside, so it's true to its sign. And that tells us whether we are going to shift up or down. Um, we also need to think about what the A value out front tells us. And remember, that tells us whether we are going to open um, up or down. on the graph, and the A value tells us whether we've, we're gonna have a normal or a regular shape, or if the A value is greater than one, it will be skinnier, or wider, if the, if the A value is something between zero and one. So this next example, we need to sketch a graph, and we want to look at how we sketch, remember if it's in this particular format, um, we know our vertex right away. So we know our vertex is the point negative 1, 3. So let's graph that point, negative 1 up to 3. And we know this is telling us that it's going to open down. And it's going to be skinnier than our, our typical graph. It's like it's getting stretched a little bit. So we know we're going to have some points here crossing the y-axis and the x-axis. So we just want to come up with some points. Um, you may or may not be asked to find x and y intercepts specifically. In a lot of instances, it's not always easy to do. So we're going to choose a couple of points and just to help us get an idea of what this graph looks like. So if we plug zero into that equation, we're gonna have negative two times zero plus one is one squared plus three. So one squared is one, so we get negative two plus three, so we get one. So the point zero, one is on the graph. And if we use symmetry, then we know this point at negative two, one is also on the graph. Um, Let's plug in another point. Let's plug in x is equal to 1, and let's see where that takes us. So if we plug in 1, we get negative 2 times 1 plus 1 is 2 squared. So 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 3, so we get negative 5. So at positive 1, we're already down here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that means let's use some symmetry to show where that point is. So it's pretty tight, pretty skinny curve, isn't it? All right, next, we really want to look also at, um, we've got to review the process of completing the square. So to get an equation that's in um, it's not in that vertex form. Um, we want to complete the square. So for me personally, I always like to move that 7 or whatever the constant is. I like to move it out of the way. 
so I can focus my attention on just this x squared minus 4x. Not everybody, your Algebra 2 teacher may not have stressed that with you. Um, they may have said, just kind of move that off to the side and focus your attention on this. But I like to just move it over to the, to the left-hand side. We can move it back later, but this way we can focus our attention just on this. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. We square that. That means we're going to add 4. Let's do a different color here. Let's add 4 to both sides so that then we can rewrite this. Now we can combine those together. We get minus 3 is equal to. This becomes x minus 2 quantity squared. And then when we add the 3 back over. All right, so now we know we've got some good information here. Our graph is po pointing up, is opening up, opens up, regular shaped, I'm trying to write fast so I make, it. this is very messy, and my vertex is at 2, 3. So let's move this over, we're at 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and we know this is going to open up. Let's plug in 0 and see what we get here. So if we plug in 0, we're going to have 0 minus 2 squared plus 3. So negative 2 squared is 4 plus 3 is 7. So at 0, we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And let's use symmetry to get a good sketch of that graph. Boom. Okay, one last type of problem that I want to share with you from this particular section. Um, if you notice, we're not spending a whole lot of time. I'm not doing a whole lot with this section. Mostly because this should be review for you and you've worked with this stuff quite a bit already. But let's take a look at this particular example. Because um, it's probably been a while since you've done one like this. So it says, find the quadratic function that has the given vertex and whose graph passes through the given point write the function in standard form. So that means we want to write our equation in this particular format. y is equal to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. All right, I don't know where that straight mark came from, but it's, it's from previously. It's not letting me erase it. Okay, so we have some information here that we can plug in. We're given this vertex of 2, 5. So I'm going to write that part in. We don't know our a value, but we have that point 2, 5. So we can plug that in. And then if you think about it, we also have this other point. So this is giving us an x and a y coordinate that we can plug in. So I'm going to do that plugging in also now. So I kind of like to do that in two steps just so that I can see. This is general form for my equation. Now I'm going to plug into this I'm going to plug 7 in for y. I don't know what my a is, and that's really what I'm trying to find. And then I've got 3 for x. And I need to solve. If you notice, what we've got to solve for here is a, and that's what we need. That's the piece of information that's missing from this equation. So let's solve this. So we get 7 is equal to a times, we do 3 minus 2 is 1 squared, which is just 1 and then plus 5. So this is saying a plus 5 is equal to 7. If we subtract 5, then we find that a is equal to 2. So now we can go back and we can take that value and plug back into the equation that we know we've got based on the vertex that we were given. So y is equal to a, well we know our a value now is 2, times x minus 2 quantity squared plus 5. All right. Hopefully this is um, good review. We're giving you a few problems to practice with this. We're not overloading you with a whole lot of practice with this type of problem because we are figuring and assuming that you are somewhat familiar and comfortable with it, but you're just going to need some review and practice. So if you need more practice than what I have given you or if you've got questions, please make sure you come and talk with me.